We have three Jollibees. The first Jollibee actually opened up in Winnipeg. Tonight, a delegation of some two dozen Manitobans wrap up a health care recruitment trip to the Philippines. Details on how many nurses they help choose Friendly Manitoba coming up. This is CBC Winnipeg News. Thank you for joining us. I'm Riley Lechuk. We begin tonight with concerns about the Maples Care Home in Winnipeg. The daughter of a resident at that home says she has found her dad lying in his own urine on more than one occasion. The woman documented video of the conditions in his room during a recent visit. Details from the CBC's Josh Crabb. This is what it looks like. Urine dripped on the floor below Dee Dee Andrews' 73-year-old father's bed at Maple's personal care home. She took this video during a visit last Tuesday. At 12 lunchtime, I come to bring him lunch. This is what it looks like. Her father, Lloyd Bone, is a residential school survivor from Crane River. He's a residential kid, so he's been hurt on his way in. Now he's being hurt on his way out. She told CBC it's not the first time his room has been found in this condition. This is the situation I come into every single day when my dad's here. Dirty bed. Hair. Pee. In an emailed statement, Rivera, the company that owns Maples Care Home, says the health and safety of residents is their top priority, but can't comment on specifics due to privacy. We can confirm this is not a home-wide issue. We take the issue raised by the resident's family very seriously and are working with them to ensure the resident's care needs continue to be supported. Andrews wants her dad moved somewhere else. I'm going to feel helpless because I don't have that space and I just want to take him and let him even sleep on my couch. 56 residents died in a months-long COVID-19 outbreak at Maple's Care Home, one of the hardest-hit care homes during the pandemic. That prompted a report commissioned by the province. It made several recommendations, including improving housekeeping and cleaning. A spokesperson for the Winnipeg Regional Health Authority says in a statement that WRHA is aware of the situation and we are confident Rivera is working with the family to resolve any concerns. Andrew says she tries to clean her dad's room, but she works two jobs, which doesn't leave her much time to help. Josh Crabb, CBC News, Winnipeg. The Seven Oaks School Division held an informational meeting tonight about potential staff and program cuts. The division says it is not getting what the province promised in terms of spending hikes. The PC government says, though, that is not true. Superintendent Brian O'Leary says as many as 50 teachers could be cut. Busing for older students and after-school programs are also on the chopping block. A handful of parents attended tonight's meeting. They said that we were having some budget issues, there would be a big meeting about it, and uh, that they were potentially going to be cancelling the Learn to Skate program, of which my son is very fond of. How bad would that be if that program got cut? I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but he would be very, very disappointed, and uh, I think it would be a big detriment to his education. The Seven Oaks uh, School Division budget will come before its board in March. The family of an Indigenous woman killed in a remote northern First Nation is calling for governments for emergency help. 47-year-old Noreen Tate was assaulted on the Opipanawapian Cree Nation last week. Her sister Arla says there has been an increase in violence in her community. Arla says her sister Noreen had a beautiful voice and loved to sing. The homicide of a family member is very traumatic. There are so many mixed feelings. Shock anger, depression. Tate says there's no help to deal with mental health issues, addictions and domestic violence. Manitoba's delegation is returning home from a week-long nurse recruiting trip in the Philippines. Shared health officials interviewed hundreds of pre-screen candidates. A delegation of about two dozen Manitobans spent days meeting with prospective recruits. Labor and Immigration Minister John Reyes says the province is making an attractive offer. The nurses that are, that are going to be coming to Manitoba from this group will be well taken care of. Again, they'll have three months uh, in terms of, of housing support. Uh, their immigration will be taken care of, like the, the fees and uh, the, the, the transportation. Reyes says they are hoping to recruit 300 Filipino nurses to come to Manitoba over the next two years. 
Well, it's only been a few years since ride hailing services like Uber hit the streets of Winnipeg, but they're already taking a big chunk out of the business for vehicle for hires in the city. CBC's Cameron McLean has more on a trend that looks to continue over the next few years. More Winnipeggers are using ride hailing apps like Uber than ever before. A City of Winnipeg report shows that they accounted for more than a third of the vehicles for hire rides taken last year. In 2020, taxis gave nine out of every 10 rides in the city. That fell to about three quarters of the total rides taken in 2021. Last year, that fell even further. The number of personal transportation vehicles, including ride-sharing apps and other limousines, nearly doubled between 2019 and 2022. Services like Uber might be taking an increasing share of the rides, but that doesn't mean that individual drivers are seeing a surge in business. I spoke to one driver who said he's seen a drop in the number of rides he's getting in recent months, and he blames the increasing number of Uber drivers on the road. These days it's very bad, like the last year was very good, but after New Year, it's all like very slow. So I, like I do like uh, in one week, I do two or three times, like maybe it's Friday night and Saturday night. The Winnipeg Parking Authority is also considering a plan to turn some downtown loading zones into drop off and pickup spots for vehicles for hire. The report says that could happen sometime between now and 2025. Cameron McLean, CBC News, Winnipeg. There was a reception, warm reception that is, for Morden's first drag brunch over the weekend. Outside, a colorful crowd of supporters gathering, holding signs, promoting love and acceptance. Inside, six drag queens performed a Y2K-themed performance at a sold-out show with food, sing-alongs and family-friendly fun. Organizers say having LGBTQ family events in rural areas is important to help people feel more accepted in their communities. All right, let's take a look at downtown Winnipeg tonight. It was a nice day here in southern Manitoba. Nice to see the sunshine. Northern Manitoba getting some snow tonight. John Sauter's forecast is coming up next. This weather update is brought to you by Capital Ford Lincoln. The trade and upgrade event is on now. Well, let's start in northern Manitoba because today about 5 to 10 centimeters was falling through areas like Flin Flon and over into Thompson. And there's more snow on the way tonight. You can see the system here on Futurecast rolling out to the east. Areas like Shimatawa and up into Gillum will pick up probably 10 to 13 centimeters of additional snow over the next 24 hours. Here in the south, it was all about the clearing this afternoon. Beautiful sunshine by about 4.30. And it looks like a sunny Tuesday on the way in southern Manitoba. Not quite as mild as it was today. Same with Wednesday. Wednesday will be the cooler day of the week. And then we start to see some milder weather again toward the end of the week. Here's a look at 24-hour snowfall amounts as we look at northern Manitoba by 4 o'clock on Tuesday. Maybe around, uh, like I say, 10 to maybe up to 13 centimeters. The northeast picking up the most as far as additional snowfall is concerned. Tonight here in the south, breezy but clear. Sunny day on the way for Tuesday. Minus 13 in the morning. Minus 7 in the afternoon and then in the long range we get those cool days I talked about minus nine on Thursday winds pick up some snow at minus one on Friday and mild weather on the way for the weekend. Thank you, John. That's your late news for this Monday. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. We will see you again tomorrow at 6 and 11. Have a great night.